Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here a netbook from Asus. This is the EPC X101. It's their latest netbook, and it's their cheapest, selling for just about $200. And that's because it sort of goes back to what some of the earliest netbooks had. It uh, does not run Windows out of the box. It instead comes with Mego Linux, and it has uh, relatively inexpensive components when compared with most of the laptops or even 10-inch uh, netbooks that you would find today. I'll uh, take a look at the specs in a second, but first let's just take a quick look at what you get. It's extraordinarily thin and light, uh, weighs around 2 pounds, and it's um, a lot thinner than any previous model. From, uh, from Asus. This version has a solid state disk. It's a, it's a little um, card that has the storage on it. There's no hard drives, there's no moving parts. Helps them keep it thin and um, there's also a hard drive version of this which will be a little bit thicker that may or may not be available in the US at some point. Uh, we've got one USB port on the side, a little vent and the power jack. On the other side, one more USB port um, headphone and uh, microphone jack, so it's actually a combo headset jack, and a micro SD card slot instead of a full-size SD card. So there's two total USB, um, microphone, micro SD, and that's pretty much it for your uh, ports and capabilities here. Uh, no VGA port, um, no Ethernet jack. There's uh, also a, a key lock spot right there. The battery comes with a three-cell battery. There's uh, um, It's removable, which means that you could also uh, put in a 6-cell battery if you can find one, but they're not going to be selling a 6-cell battery option in the U.S., again, to keep prices low. Um, there is one large uh, remo removable panel here. You just have to take off that little piece of rubber, uh, undo the screw, and inside you'll find RAM and that solid-state disk, so you can actually upgrade the memory or replace it uh, if you know what you're doing. And the top has a sort of textured finish. It's uh, got a matte finish to it, so it's not particularly shiny. Uh, it does sort of show smudges, but you won't see fingerprints per se. You just sort of see uh, various colors after a little while. Um, and as I mentioned, it's a lot thinner than previous models. I happen to have here probably the thickest, heaviest model that Asus ever uh, released in the netbook lineup. This is the EPC-1000H. It was the first model with a 10-inch screen. Um, they got a lot smaller and sleeker since 2008 when this was released, but you can see how far they've come here in terms of overall design. Um, this guy does have a full-size USB, or a full-size SD card slot, three USB ports total at VGA, um, and I believe, yeah, there's also an Ethernet jack, so, uh, and separate mic and headphone jacks. So, I mean, you don't necessarily get as much in terms of functionality here, but it's a lot smaller, a lot lighter, a lot easier to carry around. In fact, it's almost something that I would compare to a tablet, like I have here the uh, HP touchpad. Um, clearly this is a little bit smaller, but this is about 2 pounds, this is about 1.6, 1.7 pounds. Um, when you're carrying them, there, there's not a huge difference there. Um, and because this runs Mego Linux, which is sort of a lightweight operating system that's designed for quick boot, uh, connection to the internet, and so forth, the, uh, the user experience is actually somewhat similar. Uh, the difference is we've got an x86 processor here, and it's uh, something that therefore you would be able to install Windows or another operating system on if you wanted to, or more powerful Linux applications or Linux-based operating systems. Uh, in terms of specs, we've got a 1.33 gigahertz Intel Atom N4 35 processor. Uh, it's a little bit slower than the chips that you'll find in a lot of other um, netbooks, and the performance really does seem a little bit sluggish in, in many ways, but you'll see in a second that it's, uh, it's pretty fast in other ways. Um, the uh, the little guy has eight gigabytes of storage, I believe, and um, one gigabyte of RAM. Let me just double check here. Eight hundred two eleven BGN Wi Fi, three cell battery, uh, three megapixel. I mean, a zero point three megapixel camera, which is a, a VGA camera, and I think that's it for the specs. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at the inside. We've got a matte display with a sort of glossy. Uh, bezel around the side of it. Unfortunately, that's pretty common these days uh, for Asus netbooks. Uh, it's very well, it doesn't quite defeat the purpose of the matte display. It doesn't. It's not glossy. It's not shiny. It won't reflect glare. Uh, but the bezel will. Um, the there's no switch as we've seen on some to uh, close the webcam. But if you're not using it, you're not using it. Uh, touchpad. It's one large panel here. You can click left and right on the two sides here, but it's, um, I'm not in love with the touchpad. You have to pr click pretty hard in order for anything to happen. The keyboard, 
I really don't like. It's um, kind of hard to tell from this video, but it's much narrower than earlier Asus EPC keyboards. Um, so the keys are spaced fairly well, and in terms of width, it's not too bad, but um, the height of the keyboard makes all the keys a little closer together than you might expect, and so uh, I've frequently found myself hitting the wrong key. I'm sure it's something you can get used to. I got used to typing on a 7-inch Asus EPC 701 netbook, so uh, which had a much smaller keyboard than this, but at least it was a little bit more consistent in terms of where the keys were. You have some weird choices here, like the uh, back screen, uh, backspace button is very tiny and is right next to the delete button. Uh, the function keys have also been sort of squashed here, um, so that you press function F1 yeah, function 1, function 2 to hit F1, F2, etc. Um, so certain things like in the web browser, if you want to hit F11 to uh, full screen, you have to hit function F11. And whereas earlier models had things like screen brightness and volume and, and wireless toggles at the top, they're in the middle row here. Um, in terms of overall performance, I'm going to turn it on and you'll see that it actually boots quite quickly. And that's uh, partly a function of the solid state disk and partly a function of the lightweight Linux operating system. So uh, here it's booting Mego, and you can see as I turn it that uh, the screen doesn't reflect glare even though there's a fair amount of sunlight coming in here. Okay, it's about 20 seconds to the desktop. Now it's connecting to my wireless network. And for some reason it's taking a little a moment to load up everything here. Normally it does that a little bit faster. Um, the operating system is designed uh, in an interesting fashion. There's a, there's a My Zone screen here which gives you access to your Facebook information, Twitter information, and shortcuts. You can also have email notifications, tasks, appointments, and so forth here. You can go to Zones, which will show you a list of open applications. Right now there's nothing. Internet, which shows you uh, your recent browser tabs. It uses the Google Chromium web browser, the open source Linux version of uh, Google Chrome. Status, which gives you combined information from Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can log in with any accounts that you may have. Uh, people also shows you uh, information from your social networks. Media, I don't actually have any media files stored on here right now, but you've got media players built in. And applications, which is um, not loading right now. Um, we've got a battery meter, wireless meter. Okay, so let's go to applications here. And this is sort of an interesting space that has accessories, games, internet, media, office, and system tools. Some things I would expect to be under system tools or under accessories and vice versa. So for instance, uh, accessories includes your settings options uh, or the ASUS App Store, which is a version of the uh, Intel App Up Center where you can download applications. Not a huge wealth of, of third-party applications available for the platform right now, but the App Store experience works relatively well. It takes a little longer than you might expect to, to load certain things though. Um, Let's just launch a quick application just to show you how some of these things work. So we've got a calculator. Most applications actually run in full screen mode. The calculator doesn't take up the full screen, but you notice everything else sort of disappears. We can switch around by scrolling to the top of the screen, and now we can go back to my zone, zones, or other things. And you can see now that switching between applications is uh, a little sluggish at times. And every time you come back here, even though we were in the accessories menu, for some reason it brings up internet. Uh, there might be a setting that you can change there, um, but I haven't found it yet. Under uh, system tools, we've got the ability to bring up a terminal. So if you want to uh, poke around and, and explore Linux a little bit more, you can do that here. And I've, I've only had this for about a day. I haven't really explored all of the capabilities just yet. And uh, there's the Chromium web browser, which I was able to log in with my Google Chrome information, and it was able to grab my uh, applications and settings from my other devices. So basically, you know, the Chromium browser is probably the most useful feature on this, and it works pretty well as a web browsing device. You can run web applications, so if you have problems finding applications that run natively on Mego, you can always use Chrome. And uh, you can also always go into full screen mode if you want a little extra screen real estate. So anyways, there's a quick look at the operating system, the hardware, and the overall device of the EPC 
X101. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.